Greetings, fellow traveler. Today, I would like to talk about the energy that is us. The energy that we carry. Some could refer to it as the spirit that we carry. It's something that I don't believe should be taken for granted. I share this because in reflecting on my own journey, I can see where I gave my energy away, where my energy was being stolen from me. To explain that, I use the example of uh, being around a family member in the past. Uh, I just moved to the state and I was looking forward to be around this older person especially my blood relative, very close, my brother, in fact. And what I realized over the ups and downs of our relationship, uh, I look up to him a lot. It got to a point to where we began to separate. That was for various reasons. Uh, other people still in my energy as well were in the mix. But it ultimately came down to he felt as if he didn't have power or control over me anymore. And I didn't understand it. I didn't want to grasp it. I didn't, I wasn't able to comprehend what was going on. Fast forward to now, since that period, it's been what, 10 years? And I finally get it. I truly understand it. See, during that period, I was looking up to him in many areas of life. But what I didn't know was he was looking up to me. That's, that's tricky, huh? Mm -hmm. See, I would do things that he, he, he would say uh, certain comments about the choices I would make and the way that I would move on those choices without fear. And I would tell him, I was scared shitless. But there's only one way to go about it, and that's to do it. And for the longest time, he could not grasp it. See, what I believe was, if I can do some of the things that he did in life, then I would be as valuable as he is in life for others. But as I worked on myself more, I chased certain goals. I began to see that he was looking up to me for fearlessness. Because those who looked up to him didn't push him as much. Possibly. I don't know. I'll never know because I didn't live his life. I don't live his life. But what I can say is, looking back at it, I look at the way that I made my choices as opposed to the way he made his choices. And it's not to say that I'm better. No, not at all. I understood something fundamentally that he was not able to grasp. He moved under the premise of see what people like and gravitate to it. I do the opposite from jump. I did the opposite. Even now in my life, I do the opposite. I don't look at what everybody else is doing. It's none of my business. I think about, hmm, what do I want to do next? And I jump out there. It might take, it might not. But I have to act on it in order to know what it makes me feel. Does it give me more energy? Does it give me more life? Does it breathe more life into me? Or does it make me feel not proud of myself? Does it make me feel that I'm giving away power to somebody else or something else? You only know by doing. So I, I use that example to expand upon the idea of our energy, knowing what gives us, uh, what inspires us to live day to day. Doesn't have to be some big movie dramatic scene. No. What inspires you? 
what makes you think, man, that was cool. Sometimes I'll randomly get up and go for a walk. I'll drive away to a park. Enjoy myself. I go to a park because I like nature. I didn't even know I like nature until I got in my 30s. Late 20s, early 30s. But that was a time where I began to develop more, understand who I was more. And I paid attention to what fed me because I lived a life so long, so used to being drained. I thought that's what life was. But then I can go out and go for a walk. I'm clear minded. Whether I'm listening to something or not, I might have in some headphones or if it's a very peaceful day and nobody's there. Oh, beautiful. I'm going to enjoy nature. I'm going to enjoy seeing the colors change during the seasons. I'm going to enjoy the peacefulness, the love of the sound of birds. I'm going to embrace these things because it gives me life. So I share these things with you because there's no age where this stops. There's no age. We all have our own journeys. I understand it. Find the things that make you smile inside. And embrace them. Some of you that might be going for a walk. For some of you that might be doing some kind of art. Think back to when you were young. People talk about inner child. Think back to when you were young. One of the things I did when I was young. I would doodle in class. I always wanted to be able to draw. But I didn't I didn't go for it. I simply doodled and it was satisfying for me, mostly because I had extra time in class because class wasn't that big of a challenge for me. Cool. So I would doodle on all my papers on almost all the papers. Cool. But as an older individual, I'll do that now. And I don't feel bad about it. I'm sharing this because the more you make yourself happy, the more clarity you will gain. By clarity, I mean it in two regards. I mean it in clarity of self and who you are and the things that you like or the things that you enjoy, the simple pleasures of life. But you'll also be able to see the polar opposite of that. You will be able to see those that you do not resonate with and understand them. Because you will know that they're not living the life that's inspiring them to enjoy their day, to enjoy their moments. They're doing what the world has told them to do or programmed them to do. This talk is not for everybody, but for those who do get it, I hope it does help. It's the reality of the world is always changing. We are always changing. So to be able to give yourself the gift of peace and feed that energy that is the spirit of you. I mean, what more could you ask for? Say you got all the money in the world. Don't got to work. You still have to live. Say you don't have to worry about different commitments you have in your life. People, places, things, whatever. Still got to live. There's still a journey ahead. So for myself, I'm making peace with that. And finding things that feed that peace. And what more can I ask for? This topic is also inspired by a reflection of relationships in the past. Not just my brother, but many, many. And I'm beginning to see that not only was I giving my power away, but it was certain things I was doing because it just came natural to me. The others would mimic and act as if it was their creation. It was their invention. It was their character. It was their way of being. And I was so busy looking outward, I wasn't looking within. So I didn't recognize that it was me. I didn't recognize there were traits that I had that they were copying. I had no idea. But then when I began to wake up, man, it was an interesting time. The best of times, the worst of times. (laughs) 
it was interesting because then I be I began to see a trend. I'm gonna see, okay, well, before I knew that individual, this is how their life was from how they see it. When I was around that individual, this is how their life was from how I see it and from how they see it because I speak, I used to speak to them a lot or observe a lot, paid a lot of attention. Then after I left their life, you see how it is. It's happened with well, all of my entire friend circle. When I woke up, when I grew and I looked back, I could see that the peak of their life was when I was around. Do not get this twisted. I'm not saying I make everybody's life better. Because I made some people life hell too. Being honest. But I realized that it was certain energy that I was putting out that they were taking hold to and taking claim to. Like a lien on a house. When I claimed that lien, it all changed. It all changed. Because I became more and more unapologetically me. Through the good and the bad. I would be honest with my truths, whether it was something that would make somebody happy or something that would hurt. Because they had to know that I am me, not the figment of their imagination that they want me to be. That's what we owe ourselves. We can go out into the world, we can have jobs, careers, all that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. But we do not owe the job or the career. And the job and the career does not owe us. We serve via choice. That's it. It's a simple understanding. It's not always easy to accept, but that's the truth. We don't work a job that we didn't apply for. It doesn't happen. We choose it. So who we are now is a victim of our, not even a victim, is the outcome of our choices or circumstances. But we choose where we go on the journey. And no matter how harsh the truth can be, building a relationship with it allows you to move forward in a way that gives you peace of mind. I'm not a proponent. Of, I'm not a big supporter of chasing happiness. No, chase peace. Because when you have peace with self, you appreciate it more from yourself and from others. But happiness, happiness can be synthetic. Dopamine to tell you that. It's fleeting. Chase your peace. When I doodle, I'm at peace. When I go for my walk, I'm at peace. When I cook for a whole family and it's just me in the, in the house, I'm at peace. Still working on that because it's destroying my grocery bill. But it's simply an understanding of do the things to give you peace. When I read, I'm at peace. I'm focused. And not a hard focus. Like, oh, I got to get this done. No, I'm present. I enjoy I'm loving what I'm doing. And in loving what I'm doing, I'm loving myself. I think it's a good place to stop as I can go on and on as usual. Feel the travel to find your peace. Protect your energy. Learn more about who you are. So you can defend yourself against people who want you to be who you are not. With that said, these are my thoughts. Thank you for giving me time to share. I look forward to hearing your insights. Until next time, be blessed.